Hi, in this video we're going to look at the topic of CERDs. That's a GCSE higher topic, and this will only appear on the higher paper. It won't be on any foundation papers. It's a grade B to A topic. Um, depending on what exactly you're being asked to do, it might even be an A-star topic. Um, but it's not a particularly difficult one. So once you've got your head around uh, what you need to do, these should be fairly easy marks to pick up in an exam. In this video... We're going to look at the various things to do with CERDs. So, in particular, we're going to look at what a CERD is. We're going to look at what we can do with in terms of adding, taking, multiplying and dividing CERDs. We're going to move on to look at simplifying them, expanding brackets that have got CERDs in, and finally something called rationalising denominator. Okay, let's start off then by looking at what is a CERD. Well, a third is a number that is written still with a square root in it. So something like root 3 or root 5 or root 7 or root 11. All these are thirds. Now, the reason that we write them like this and leave them like this is in terms of accuracy. If on your calculator you were to type in uh, the square root of 3 you will get a very, very long decimal number. And in fact, it's a decimal number that never terminates. It just keeps going on and on and on. So when we're doing calculations, in order to use something like root 3 in a calculation, as soon as you use your calculator and, and do it in terms of a decimal, you start losing accuracy. Um, it's also much easier to write square root of 3 than it is to write... 1.732050808 and so on and so on and so on. So this is a, a shorthand way of doing something. It's also a more accurate way of writing things down. And actually we can do all kinds of calculations using thirds and leave our answer in terms of thirds as well. Okay, now I've talked about um, this being a square root sign. I'm hoping that you're happy with that. If you're not happy with square roots and, and square numbers, that's a topic you need to go back and check before you start carrying on watching this video. Okay, so you need to be fairly confident um, with your square numbers. Okay, in terms of doing something, something with thirds, I, I always think of, um, of thirds a little bit like I do with uh, with algebra, if I've got root 3 and I'm adding on 2 root 3, you could think of this in terms of something plus 2 lots of something. Now, I'm fairly sure that your algebra will be good enough to be able to say that x plus 2x is the same as 3x. And in fact, we can do the same kinds of things here with my thirds. If I've got one lot of root 3 here and two more lots of root 3 here, in total, I can say that I've got 3 root 3. And I don't need to do anything else. Um, we can, of course, think about this in a tiny, slightly different way, um, and the slightly different way is, is the same as with our algebra. Again, if I'm saying that I've got x plus 2 lots of x, remember this means 2 times x. My answer would be 3 lots of x, or 3 times X. We don't write the multiply sign in um, because we know what we're talking about uh, and actually it can become confusing and think it looks like another variable. Here, there is a missing multiplying sign. This means 3 times the square root of 3, which I said before was 1.7 and so on and so on and so on. So this means 3 multiplied by the square root of 3. Not to be confused with this which means the cubed root of 3. Okay, so you have to be really careful. A little 3, like this one here, is not the same as a big 3 in front of the square root sign here. Okay, so be really careful with that. Okay, so we can add thirds that are the same as each other. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of the stuff that's on the screen at the moment. And we'll try again. Uh, let's see what else we could do. Um, what if I'd got um, root 3 and I wanted to add root 5 to it? Well, root 3 plus root 5, you might think, is root 8. Unfortunately, you would be wrong. This is not the case. 
it does not equal root 8. And the reason being is that root 3 is, is something. Let's call it x. Root 5 is something else. It's not the same as root 3. I can't simply just add the two numbers together and hope it's the same. It doesn't work like that. It's a different thing. In the same way that when I've got x plus y, it only equals x plus y. I can't do anything else with it. So if I have something that looks like root 6 minus root 2, that's it. I can't do anything else with it. I can't make that into a root 4. I can't do anything. So adding and taking, you can only add and take roots or thirds if they are the same. Okay, I'm going to write down on the right hand side three or four for you to have a very quick go at. Um, you can pause the video at this point um, when I've written them up and have a quick go. So if I said that you've got three root seven plus two root seven, you can tell me what the answer to that one is. If I've got 18 root 5, take 6 root 5. If I've got uh, 4 root 2 plus 3 root 3. And finally, what if we've got um, 3 root 18 plus 7 root 3. Okay, so here are a few for you to have a quick go at. Pause the video, have a go. The first one you can see they're both in terms of root 7s. So I've got three lots of this root 7 and two lots of the root 7. means I've got five root 7 in total. When we're doing takeaways, we do it exactly the same. 18 lots of something multiplied by six lots of something gives me 12 root 5. Then here we've got 4 root 2 plus 3 root 3. There is nothing else I can do with that. So I can't do anything else there. The answer is already here. And lastly, 3 root 18 plus 7 root 3. On the face of it, it looks like there's nothing you can do here. But I'm going to show you what we can do with this particular type when we come to simplify them. Okay, so we'll bear this one in mind. 3 root 18 plus 7 root 3. We'll look at this next. Okay, so simplifying thirds. I'm just going to write up at the top 3 root 18 plus, plus 7 root 3. Okay, we'll come back to this in a second. Right. When we can simplify thirds, now, one thing I didn't talk about before um, when we were looking at rules of thirds is this: there's a really cool thing that you can do um, that is for multiplying and dividing thirds. Now, root 3 multiplied by root 2 is actually root 6. So when you're multiplying, you can actually just multiply the numbers and stick them back under the root sign. Equally, I could say that I've got... Um, root 7 multiplied by root 4 and this is the same as root 28 okay and similarly I can say that if I've got root 18 and we were dividing by root 2 that would be the same as the square root of 18 divided by 2 which is the same as the square root of 9 now, on this slide, there are a couple of things that I'm hoping you've picked up on already. I'm hoping that you've looked at this and thought, oh, the square root of 4, I know what that is. That's an actual whole number that isn't in third form. I'm hoping you're looking at this and thinking, well, the square root of 9 is 3. I know that. These are the actual numbers. And when we start to simplify them, what we can do is we can say, if we can get it in terms of um, a square number, square rooted, then I can take the square root of it and actually write that number down. So here, we'd actually get an answer of 3. Right. Now, using these rules, in particular, this idea that we can take a number and break it up into two other thirds is how we're going to start to simplify them. Okay, let's get rid of some of this. And let's try again. 
So, let's see. What if I had a number that looked like uh, root 200, for example? If I wanted to simplify root 200, well, what I can do is I can split it up into two different square roots, like this. So I could take it, say it's the same as root 100 minus root 2, or I could split it up into two other things that multiply with each other. I could say root 50 multiplied by root 4. What are the numbers times to me? Let's make 200. Um, what else? We could have root um, 25 multiplied by, uh, let's have a thing, uh, 8, root 8. Okay, all these things are equally valid, they're all equivalent to each other. Um, and I'm hoping that when we, when I'm doing this, you, you're looking at these and thinking, oh, now, I wonder why he's picked those numbers. Is it because root 100 is a number that we can actually just write down without the square root sign? We can stop it from being a third and it becomes just a whole number. Is it because root 4 is a number? Is it because root 25 gives me 5 as a whole number? And actually, when we're starting to simplify thirds, what we're looking for is a square factor. So something that we're interested in is a square factor. That just means a square number that goes into the third that we were starting with. Now, ideally, what we're looking for is the largest square factor that goes in. In this case, it was the first one I did. It was root 100 multiplied by root 2. So what we can do is we can say that root 200 is the same as root 100 multiplied by root 2. Root 100 is 10. So this simplifies to 10 root 2. I've made my number under the square root sign a lot smaller. These things are equivalent to each other, but I've broken it down a different way. Okay, so I've got an answer of 10 root 2. Now, you might be thinking, well, what about if I'd not picked that? What if I'd picked one of the other ones? Can, can I still do that? Well, let's explore this one. Okay, what if it was root 50 multiplied by root 4? Well, root 50 doesn't seem like there's anything I can particularly do straight away, but root 4 is, that just means root 50 multiplied by 2. Right, well... That's not the same answer. 2 root 50 doesn't seem to be the same as 10 root 2. So maybe we need to ask ourselves the same question again with a root 50. Is there a square number that goes into 50? Another one. And there is. We can say that 25 goes into that. So we can say that that's the same as root 25 multiplied by root 2 multiplied by 2. Now, if you end up doing this, so you've looked at it once, you've had a go at breaking it down, you're then trying again for the second time. Don't forget the parts that you've already dealt with, okay, and to write those down. Root 25 is 5, so I've now got 5 multiplied by root 2, multiplied by 2. And remembering that when you're multiplying numbers together, it doesn't matter what order you multiply them in, you get the same answer. Can you see now that we've got a 5 multiplied by a 2? That gives us 10 root 2, which is exactly the same answer as what we got before. It's a bit like cancelling down fractions, where you can start at a point, doesn't necessarily matter whether you get the highest common factor to start with for when you're simplifying your fractions, or if you get a smaller one, but have to do it several times. Okay, so the idea of simplifying thirds is this. What we're trying to do is cancel them down to the smallest that they can be by taking out square factors. This is the key to this part. Okay, the thing that you might be expected to do then with thirds is how we go at expanding some brackets with thirds in. Now again, this is very similar to if we were expanding brackets with algebra. This could very easily be something that looks like 5 minus x squared. And when you were doing something like this, you'd use one of the methods that you're comfortable with. It might be the grid method, it might be foil, it might be a crab claw type method, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to do this one using a grid. And the way that I'm going to set it out is I'm going to remember 
that 5 times root 3 squared means 5 times root 3 oops, means 5 minus root 3 multiplied by 5 minus root 3. I'm going to set it out in a grid. So I'm going to do 5 minus root 3 5 minus root 3 and I'm going to times these things together. So 5 times 5 gives me 25. 5 multiplied by minus root 3 again thinking about how we do it algebraically at this point we don't know what 5 multiplied by minus x is in terms of a number it's just minus 5x and here it will be the same kind of idea it becomes minus 5 root 3 okay let's do the same down here I've got 5 times minus root 3 again it's the same thing another 5 minus root 3 and the final bit this is the bit now where we have to be a little bit clever and take care over what we're doing at this point, we're saying we've got minus root 3 multiplied by minus root 3. Well, before we even think about our roots, we've got a minus sign multiplied by another minus sign, which is going to be positive. So I'm going to write that down. I think of root 3 times root 3. Well, root 3 times root 3 is the same as root 9. Ah, root 9. Root 9 is a square number, square rooted. So rather than putting root 9, what you might want to put is just 3. Now, this is the good thing about when you're simplifying these brackets. You will spot that you've got a square root sign of a number multiplied by the same square root sign of a number. In effect, what happens is your square root signs cancel out. You're squaring a square root. You're doing the inverse operation uh, of something, and these things are going to cancel out. Okay, So root 3 multiplied by root 3 gives you 3. The last thing we can do is collect all of our like terms together. So just like when we do it algebraically, we collect like terms, we do the same thing here, and I'm going to collect together my numbers first. I'm going to get my 25 and my 3, so I've got 28, and the last bit, or almost a bit like my algebra terms, it's I'm collecting my terms together, I've got minus 5 root 3 minus another 5 root 3, gives me minus 10 root 3. I'm checking back at the question now. It says write your answer in the form a minus b root 3, where a and b are integers or whole numbers. So a minus b root 3. I've got that. I've got it in the right form. So to answer the question properly, I would say a equals 28, b equals 10. OK, again, I'm going to get you to have a go at a few of these in a minute. Not right now. Let's move on to the final thing that we want to look at, and you can have a go at um, uh, your own questions in a second. OK, so the last thing we're going to do, it might give you a question and say, rationalise the denominator of. And it might look something like this. 3 over root 5. Now, what this means, rationalising the denominator, root 5 is an irrational number. All of these thirds are irrational. It just means it's a, a decimal that continues forever and ever and ever, and we're never actually able to write it down in terms of a whole number. The denominator is the bottom part of a fraction. So if you have a fraction with a whole number at the top, or even a root at the top, and a root at the bottom, a square root sign at the bottom as your denominator. We don't really want that. In an ideal world, what we would like to do is make it, make it a whole number at the bottom so that the fraction makes a little bit more sense. It's called rationalising the denominator. And the way that we do it is using our simple rules of fractions. What we can say is whatever the um, root is underneath, we're going to multiply top and bottom by that root. The reason that this is, is effective is from what we saw before, that our square root signs when we multiply them effectively cancel. We do the same to the top, and actually all we're doing here, root 5 divided by root 5, anything divided by itself is 1, we're just multiplying this by 1, which means that it's going to be equivalent to this. In fact, it's exactly the same as this, 
just in a different form. So let's do that. 3 times root 5 is 3 root 5. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. So rationalising the denominator, I've done in one go. In terms of one for you to have a go like this, I'll write one out. Uh, again, you can pause the video and have a go at it yourself. What if we have um, 1 over root 3? Okay, so we need to have a go at rationalising this. 1 over root 3. Do the same thing as before. Um, think about multiplying top and bottom by the same thing. Um, try and get rid of your root 3s, trying to cancel them out. So what I'm hoping you will have done is this. Remember, root 3 divided by root 3 here, it's equivalent to 1, so we're not changing the size of the fraction, we're just writing it in a different way. 1 times root 3 is root 3, root 3 times root 3 is 3. So 1 over root 3 is the same as, it's equivalent to, root 3 over 3. This is rationalising the denominator. And actually what you might want to do this for is when you're starting to add together various fractions. If you've got them over um, over 3, uh, you might be able to cancel something out. There's all kinds of applications for this, but fundamentally what we're trying to do is get a whole number as your denominator rather than a third. Okay, final one then. Have a go at doing this one. So express 10 over root 5 in that form. I'd also like you to have a go at expanding out um, a bracket. You can have a go at something like this. 3 plus root 2 squared. And as a final thing for you to try, you could have a go at multiplying out something that looks like this. 6 minus root 5 multiplied by 3 plus root 5. Okay, so you've got three things to have a go at. Question 1, question 2, and question 3. Pause the video, try these skills, and I'll explain the answers in a minute. Okay, so for question 1, expressing 10 over root 5 in this form, where a and b are integers, very similar to what we were doing before, rationalising the denominator. You're going to multiply both of these by root 5 over root 5, which is going to give you 10 root 5 over 5. Hopefully you've noticed that 10 divided by 5 here is the same as 2. So we can go one step further and say 10 over 5 is 2. So my answer is 2 root 5. Okay, that's the answer to part 1. Second one then. Second one you're going to get... The second question you're going to get something like this. You're going to get uh, 3 plus root 2 squared. So you're going to set it out as 3 plus root 2. 2 multiplied by 3 plus root 2. Whether you use FOIL, GRID, whatever method you're going to use, you'll end up getting the following terms. You'll get a 9 plus 6 root 2 plus another 2, which gives you a final answer. I'll write it at the top of 11 plus 6 root 2. Okay, and the third one, again, we're, I'm going to use foil this time just so that you can see the difference. And in fact, I might even draw on my crab claws as well. My first pair is 6 times 3, which gives me uh, 18. My outside pair gives me plus 6 root 5. My inside pair, minus 3 root 5. And my last pair, uh, minus root 5 multiplied by plus root 5 gives me minus 5. Collect together all my like terms and I end up with 13 plus 3 root 5. Okay, let's have a little look at our revision notes then at this point. So again, in this video, I've done revision notes at the end. If you want to make uh, notes on what we've done so far in terms of thirds, you can talk about the rules of adding, taking, multiplying and dividing. You can look at rationalising the denominator. Denominator. You can look at being able to simplify in various ways, whether that's collecting like terms or, in fact, 
um, starting to cancel out by taking out square factors. So these are the key parts in terms of what we're looking for in this video. Um, take your notes, go back through the video, uh, revise thoroughly, and hopefully when this question comes up on an exam, you will do really well. Um, as ever, good luck with your GCSEs. Um, Subscribe to the channel, watch the videos, um, leave me messages to let me know if you think they're good. If you want a particular video making, let me know via at Tupton Maths on Twitter. Otherwise, good luck. See you soon. Bye.